Hello and welcome to the Zimcast. I'm Chuck Zimmerman. I'd like to thank the sponsor for our program, and that's Growmark, locally owned, globally strong. In this week's program, as you can see if you're watching the video, I have David Hollenreich with Bayer Crop Science. We are at uh, the 2017 Advocacy Forum that is presented by Bayer Crop Science. And David, first of all, give us a little bit of a rundown of what you see uh, for this year's forum. Chuck, thank you, and thank you for what you do in agriculture. You know, the Advocacy Forum is a forum that we bring together every year uh, in advance of the Commodity Classic, uh, where we're really trying to stimulate conversation uh, from both people that are involved in agriculture, understand it well, uh, and those that are not, and really trying, and, and the reason we call it the Advocacy Forum is we're trying to bridge uh, some of the misinformation and some of the mistrust that occurs uh, because of uh, the folks uh, perhaps on the, uh, um, on the opposing view side uh, may not have uh, you know, as much information about the, the benefits of modern ag. So it's really about an opportunity to convene folks, have a conversation, um, and get the right information out about what we're trying to do for the betterment of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of uh, American agriculture and, and agriculture globally. Well, I, I'm not sure if I've been to all of them. I might have, but it's impressed me that we've had a real mix of people uh, in the agribusiness sector, farming sector, you know, farmers themselves, uh, people who may have some differing views about what is good, bad, right or wrong in terms of how our food is produced today. Why is this issue so important and why is it something that Bayer has kind of invested so much in? Yeah, and I, I, think, I think your viewers will really get this. Um, I, I, I think back, Chuck, to you know, my grandfather being on the farm. And at that time, some 40% of Americans were either directly or indirectly involved in agriculture. Uh, today, it's a whopping 2%. Uh, so the fact that folks aren't involved in how their food is grown really creates this divide um, and, a, and, and, and frankly, a misunderstanding um, of the use of the tools uh, that create the food on their table. So, you know, ultimately what we're trying to do is bridge that divide um, and uh, provide the right information, uh, showcase that farmers really are the best stewards of technology and the best stewards of how food is grown uh, and, and demonstrate that, uh, that, that not only do we care about people's opinions, uh, but that we're also in practice uh, putting uh, the right you know, tools to work uh, so that they have a safe, affordable food supply. And you know, one of the other challenges that you, you know well is uh, most of the folks that are opposed probably aren't going to bed hungry every day. Uh, and, but the simple fact is we've got 800 million people globally going to bed hungry and, you know, millions, tens of millions uh, within our borders in the United States. Uh, so it's not just important that, you know, we, um, we, we produce more, uh, but that we showcase the fact that we're doing it in a responsible way. We are going to be talking about um, things like scientific facts research, uh, things that have, uh, whether they've been uh, conducted by a university, uh, you know, uh, an agribusiness company, or others, um, and I think that is vital to the uh, conversation. But the thing that I think a lot of us have struggled with is, how do we deal with the emotion yeah. here? You know, people are, in large part, very emotional, emotional uh, messages sometimes resonate better. Uh, do you see that we are through advocacy and uh, a lot of the farmers who are now blogging and uh, you know telling the stories of their farm and I think a lot of times in a very emotional way is 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 that helping? It no doubt is uh, and, and you know let's let's step back a bit and just Talk about why it's so important that farmers stand up and be a proud voice for agriculture and technology. Uh, we've done the research and we know that consumers trust farmers more than us, uh, more than scientists, more than um, folks that work in university, uh, more than the government. 
more than nutritionists. Uh, so it's, it's really critical that we arm farmers with the right information. Uh, but you said it well. It's, it's not just the information, it's also the style by which uh, they need to uh, connect with folks that may, may not have the right information. Uh, so what we've done, uh, Chuck, is we've created an advocate training program. And we've, uh, we've so far trained over a thousand people uh, involved in, in agriculture outside of Bear. So farmers that, that really want to stand up and, and, and be a part of this conversation. We've pledged over 10,000 farmers to be advocates. And what do we mean by being advocates? Uh, it's, it's really uh, being willing uh, to be in the public, uh, be willing to be a blogger, be willing to, uh, to put information out there, but more importantly, be willing to be a part of the dialogue because we understand that you're not gonna bridge the head and the heart with facts alone. And the facts matter, so the intellectual side of this matters, uh, and the fact that we have you know, 1,200 independent studies that have proven biotechnology to be equivalent to non-biotech, that's important, uh, but the style by which we, we engage in this conversation and we navigate the opposition is equally important. And that's really what uh, the, uh, the advocate program is all about. So, you know, have we made a difference? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say yes, even though uh, if you look at the consumer-based research, you know, the, um, the, the bo both coasts uh, would, would certainly, you know, still have a, about a 20% opposition to biotechnology. Um, but in, in the areas in which uh, farmers live, I think we're making a difference because we're, we're certainly convening audiences and having conversations with people uh, and changing some opinions, uh, perhaps one conversation at a time. I've been very impressed with the fact that this effort on behalf of Bayer has not been just uh, here in the United States. Uh, I've met now some fine farmer folks from Germany, for example, last year, who even came over here for an Ag Chat conference to I think uh, uh, develop better develop their advocacy skills, and uh, don't know if they'll be here, but would would love to see them. Uh, this is really something that crosses all borders, because as those of us who have traveled a lot know, farmers everywhere face a lot of the same challenges, yeah. and consumers everywhere are really not that different when it comes down to it. You're exactly right, and, and, and again, I think it's important that we look at the big picture here. So today we have, as I said, 800 million people going to bed hungry. Today we have about 7.15 billion people on the planet. By 2050, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8 billion. So two and a half billion more mouths to feed. And the simple fact is, if we don't create an understanding of how we're going to meet that demand through technology, through science advancement, uh, then we're going to lose the battle. So it is a global initiative, and it's one that, uh, that we have taken across all of our internal communities, but as you said also, really trying to activate voices globally outside of Bear because it's the farmer's voice that matters most. We've got to mention it in here that uh, for anybody who is on Twitter, Facebook, well, just let's we'll call it social media, the hashtag for this conference is advocacy. Pretty simple. We hope uh, people will at least lurk in the background if they don't want to make their, their social media voice heard, but I'm sure we, we will hear a lot. Um, can you make a comment just as maybe from your standpoint uh, personally or with Bayer? Uh, what you've seen now that this technology allows everybody to have a voice, yeah good, bad, or indifferent, um, you know, or we, I call it being part of the conversation. Yeah. If you don't join it, they're going to talk about you anyway. But um, does it ever get discouraging to see some of the, um, you know, the kind of negative stuff that really is mm, not just not based on science, but maybe has some kind of agenda somebody has? Well, sure, it, it can get discouraging, uh, but, but I think more important than that, Chuck, is it allows us to have instant access to opinions, and it allows us to reframe the discussion 
uh, you know, instantly as well. Uh, so I look at social media as an avenue for us to communicate much, much more information, uh, much more positively, uh, much more quickly, such that people have the capability of consuming it. Uh, so I think it's a wonderful tool for us to communicate our great, you know, advocate platform, uh, as well as all the other great things that are happening uh, in agriculture. I do like the fact that uh, Bayer on its social media does engage with people instead of just listening or just pushing out its own message. I think that's a key to this for, for all of us. Um, let's see, anything else about uh, the advocacy forum you might want to talk to? Uh, you know, from Bayer's standpoint, I mean, what, what does this really mean to Bayer itself? Yeah, so what this really means for us is, uh, again, it's an opportunity to bring together media uh, as well as uh, people that are both pro-technology and people that have questions about technology and really bridge that discussion. Make sure that, uh, that misinformation doesn't lead to mistrust. And it's really not, as you well know, Chuck, it's not a bare commercial. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the opposite. Uh, it's a conversation about the future of agriculture and how we can take a leadership position uh, as a company by, by stewarding the right information. Uh, but it's also about how can we get the issues on the table so that we can do something about it proactively. Uh, so, you know, we're committed to this program. It's, um, it's one that, you know, that, that's been many, many years going. And I see it as uh, just as critical today as, as when we started. Well, thank you very much, David. I, I, will want, I do want to tell our audience that I've had uh, plenty of opportunity. I feel very blessed to, to have been able to visit uh, Bayer headquarters in, in Mannheim in Germany and out on some of even the farms there. Uh, what I see is, is just some of the best people in the world working hard on a problem, which is feeding a growing population. So we'll kind of leave it right there, and um, that is my Zimcast for this week. Here from San Antonio, where Commodity Classic is about to kick off, I'm Chuck Zimmerman reporting. <laughs>